Hey, 3D MJers. This is Brad Loomis, and you are listening to the 3D Muscle Journey podcast. As of this month, we now have 29 free videos over at 3DMJVault.com. The Vault is our video-based online education platform, and it continues to grow every single month. There are instructional videos on posing, hypertrophy, fat loss, peak week, spine health, post-contest recovery, and a whole lot more. Again, all of that over at 3DMJVault.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, and enjoy the show. Hey guys, this is Andrea Valdez, and today I'm talking to Eric Helms and Alberto Nunez all about where the hell we get all of our information from. The initial idea for this podcast was to simply throw a whole bunch of resources at you guys. Um, Since Berto, Eric, and I tend to seek out and learn from very different avenues as coaches and athletes, we thought it'd be good to talk about where we seek knowledge in our particular areas. And while we do totally dive into that, um, bunches of websites, books, podcasts, and programs at the end of this episode took us a while to get there, um, as usual, because... You know, our podcast is three close homies having fun with each other and picking each other's brains. We start from the beginning and talk about like the very early influences in our learning, like who our childhood coaches were, um, how we picked up things before the internet was a thing and how we eventually came to find each other. Um, And then after we discuss all the OGs for a while, we get into our current focuses and why we, yes, we all have the same job, but we all have different go-to people and resources as as athletes kind of so like we're all bodybuilding coaches but at the moment right eric is also a research scientist alberto is also a world-class competitor and a social media influencer uh you know he's a trendsetter bird is and i do the olympic lifting and functional fitness stuff so we all sort of view things differently right now as we're trying to grow but we're all still lifetime natural bodybuilders so I hope that all makes sense, and I think as you listen to it, it will, but this was a really fun conversation. It's one that we haven't gone over two hours in quite a while, so this one's a little bit longer, but it's uh, it's an enjoyable one. I think you guys will really like it. And again, at the end, we're just listing off a whole bunch of people, books, podcasts, websites, programs, apps, or whatever that we use, so um, hopefully there'll be like a gold mine of stuff at the end, and it'll be in the show notes and all that stuff. So let us know what you think at 3dmusclejourney.com or our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash team3dmj, um, and go to podcast number 89 and let us know there. So please enjoy our episode titled Who Taught You with Alberto Nunez and Eric Helms. We stand on the shoulders of giants. That is how we're starting it, huh? Okay. That's Who, what What giants, Eric? Like tall people. Because you don't want to get on the shoulders of some like half giant. You know what I'm saying? Half giant. So, like, then there wouldn't be a giant. Mad Mike's be mad at you. Oh, I don't stand on Mike's shoulders. He's, he's like three feet tall. Israel <laughs> so. Bird. Or Zerto's burn. They're both, both short. For <laughs> 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 uh, what giants here? Hey. What? I think I got. I got to thank the the first guy, and that's just the biggest guy in the gym. Like, so kudos to that dude. That was like my first source of information. F- <laughs> yeah. Find the largest. Yeah, gotta- find the actual giant. <laughs> Yeah, around yeah, for, me, yeah. first, and then ask first, him what yeah. he does, and do and you got to make the moves. Like you got to work in with him or something. It's like he's on the bench press, and you're like, "How do I start conversation?" It's like, "Hey, you mind if I work in with you, dog?" You know, and yeah, and then you know you're kind of doing the stretching thing and like talking, and you know like, you're in at that point, and then he tells you advice that, like, looking back a few years later, you're like, "Well, that wasn't the best advice," but he had good <laughs> intentions. I forget you'll yeah, have to that. do that. You'll have to hit on both genders to <laughs> to get jacked at some point in your life. Yep. yep. I just asked my buddy Patrick, who had uh, who had some aesthetics, and he also had Arnold's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, and uh, he became my my initial mentor. Tommy had train. All right. That's cool. Oh, dead, dead, deadlifts and squats in my first session. Oh yeah, and that's where you threw up everywhere. Well, no, it's outside. 
It was one one place. I'm I'm a, I'm a tidy I'm a tidy vomiter. Let's, let's not let's not get it twisted. <laughs> and that's when he turned into the exorcist. And yep. I'm just kidding. Pea soup all over the gym. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I just yeah, learned. Always eating pea soup. I think. Uh, man, I don't remember how it started. I, I think it was just the internet. Well, you advanced. Internet, yeah. I think I have too much pride to ask people for help before I knew a little bit. So I had mm -hmm. to admire from afar and be like, fuck, why don't I have that? All right. I'll just I have to figure it just, out. Burnout died and started before. It's easy to use the internet like that. Like that. Oh, yeah, because like, you old. could ask people questions and then they'd be like, why didn't you use the search function? And you're like, ah, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but like 2004, like you know, the videos would take forever to load, and <laughs> you had to find them attached in a forum post. You know, so you could read bodybuilding.com articles, but we were savvy enough to know, like, I don't know if I should just follow that completely. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy how much that changed? And because 2004, I graduated high school, I was cheerleading in high school. I didn't care about, and like I would play, but like I wasn't like I want to get big or I want to look a certain mm -hmm. way. Um, but then. It was probably like 2009 or 10 when I'm talking about how like I used to scour the internet and y'all just didn't really have the option in the same way. I had like everything I'd ever need, really. Yeah, I think Burrow even less because you started in like 99. Yeah, yeah. No, my first, uh, t like just being completely uh, clear, my first uh, guide was, uh, his name was Otto Gandhi. And he was the biggest dude at the gym, and he also happened to be a personal trainer. And the way the system worked there, when you got a membership, if there was a personal trainer that was free, they can you know take you around for an hour or what have you. Um, and yeah, like I just remember like he was the most jack person I had ever seen up until that point. And he he taught me to use a free weights. That's that's what I remember because I was just using the machines. I was reading that what was on there doing the movement they all kind of look like this they were all chest presses of some form um and eventually <laughs> i wanted a chest press uh with the free weights and and yeah he he took me under his wing and uh i think yeah he was he he played a major role in just kind of getting me started um and and yeah like getting kudos from my mentor at the time i remember like just thinking way back uh, he came up to me at some point. He's like, how do you have so much energy like to keep going? Like you've been going at it for a while. And that that, was, that hit me like right in the feels. And I'm like, wow, like that's that's uh, thank you for that. Because at the point at that point in time, he was my main source of information. Um, Otto was basically bodybuilding to me. Um, so. So, yeah, that's that was that was legitimately like the first the first uh person I went to when it came to anything, nutrition, training, what have you. And like, yeah, he's, we're friends on Facebook too, to this day. Mm -hmm. You were like, what, 17, 18, 16? 16, 16, yeah. Yeah. Have you this he energy because I'm a teenager? Oh, whoa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. when he said energy, you could be like, I'm a teenager, I'm a boy, like whatevs. But no, you're also a boy. Wow. Uh, no, that's definitely, I think I, I had to, we did like, like in gymnastics, you call it conditioning. So like, since I was six, like at, at least like a quarter of my time in gymnastics practice, like about a four hour day, like the last hour was, or the first hour, depending on what the coach decided at the time was conditioning. So it was like, you learn to train and it was just like part of your day. And then you got to do like the flow and flip, flippy stuff, but it was also like, we have 30 pull-ups and 40 dips and you have to go around three times like like all that kind of stuff you know or we would do like real depending on the coach we had one that really liked like militant type like all y'all line up all right v-ups go count them out one two and then like all right and up jumping lunges ready go you have 30 seconds if you stop we start over like it was very like um like i just never thought of it any other way and that's some like i just always I didn't dislike it, but I like always respected it from a very young yeah. age. And so then when that, when I stopped competing in that, we would, in cheerleading practice, we would like barely do stuff and everyone would bitch and I'd be like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> it's no big. Like, it's going to be fine. Um, and then, so I guess I learned early that like, yeah, this shit takes hard work and sometimes like stuff burns, but it, it's going to end at some point and then we'll get to do the fun stuff. Like, so by the time... 
Um, and then I think it was just college because I cheered all the way through undergrad and I was getting a kinesiology focused degree. So I would take like X phys or lab or like biomechanics. And I would just like kind of, I was coaching gymnastics at the time. So I would prescribe conditioning and then kind of do it and kind of study it. And it was like this, this thing, but I, I was never into like lifting heavy, even though as I got older and you guys have talked to me a lot about this, Bert, especially like progressive overload is body weight conditioning as you grow up. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, I never really thought about lifting weights until like cheerleading was over with. And I would like at the gold's gym, not the golds, it would be like, like at OU, I would, I was getting my master's in X-Phys and there was this one girl who taught this boot camp. Her name was Jill Steele. And I think she's and she runs the athletic department at like Oregon and track. I think she works at, in the track team at Oregon. She but sounds like she has a good physique. Jill, Jill Steele, Steele right? <laughs> she was this tall volleyball player, but she was a runner. She was beautiful, dude. Like aesthetic is everything. Anyways, but she had this one boot camp that was like really hard and it involved like free weights. And I remember thinking, I like this. It's kind of like gymnastics. Someone's yelling at me and it's hard. And like I would try to be the best person in the boot camp. And then in... While I was teaching in the uh, in the gym at OU, individual fitness, then the guys that were in my lab with me or like the next door lab would teach weightlifting and I would watch them and jump in with them sometimes. And then that was like the first time that it was, okay, put a barbell on your back kind of stuff rather than like throwing other humans in the air for cheer or doing squat jumps in boot camp classes, actually like mm. grabbing things. Like I said, like the free weights. And then it just kind of took off. But it, I was... I guess lucky enough to be in environments that like did that for me. Yeah. So I didn't have to. And then like the figure transition was like me kind of getting Snoopy online and looking at things or whatever. And then getting the balls to ask Chris Voss, like, okay, tell me about this as a natural competitor. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Cause you had a uh, Chris Voss in Germany. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I was scared to talk to them still. Like I was the new master student in my first year and they were like second year PhD students and they were like Big down time. the hall. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but um, when I saw Chris Foss in a video, like, so he was down the hall, and he was prepping, and I remember, like, seeing his face change as he's, like, getting lean or whatever, but I, I was, he was always just like, hey, how's it going? But then when I saw him in his in posing trunks on the internet doing the natural mm. bodybuilding or the Team Norton series, I was like, oh, my God, I have to go talk to him. Then he was like. In the life, in the life series. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Those so then I got the shoes. balls. Yeah. Yeah. But see, Andrea, like this is why like, whenever I do get a new athlete, it's important to always ask, like, what did you do prior to this? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of those early years, why they they didn't necessarily, you know, like, set you up for like being a successful bodybuilder directly. Mm -hmm. um, what they did do for you is like just like the work ethic. Like, and it's something that like when you get into something, like you get into something and like, yeah, you do, you, you, you're good at emptying out the tank, whether it be acutely like doing the day's work or, you know, here's your goal and I will, you know, work backwards and then work forwards towards it. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, as, as you mentioned all that, like from, you know, being very tiny to, you know, progressive overload <laughs> via the weight gain to, you know, finding, you know, being like, like many of us, a, an abandoned athlete looking for the next thing. Yeah. Um, it, but it all goes back to like the start, you know, picking up all those, all those, all those habits and all those lessons that, I mean, to this day, it's super important. And yeah, just the ability to, to have that gear. And I do think it's something that, that you, you learn um, has made you very successful and not just like the lifting weights, but other things. Dude, that's um, nice, Bert. I got the warm fuzzies. Yeah. I appreciate that yeah. coming from you. Did I read that right? I think so. Okay. And then I wonder if it's like too. a, <laughs> I wonder if it's like a reward thing. I know, right? Uh, like at a, when I was young, like I said, it was like we can go flip around and stuff. We have an hour of this hard work first, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you go your practice ends at eight thirty. At seven thirty, it's time for conditioning. And like it was, you know, it was always hard, push to the like this hurts, but there's always fun stuff. You know, like because I don't know if maybe that early on helped but what else yeah no learning yeah, to work hard is is it's so fucking important and no matter how good your planning is like that's that's a crucial component to your success 
Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, can we give you some more warm fuzzies? I think you're really good, Andrea, at um, looking back and being able to like follow the crumb seeds to like, oh, here's how I became the person I am today. I think you're always someone who's really self-aware and you kind of know what your motivations are, how you got here, why you are who you are, and not that you got to figure it out, but that you're always trying to figure it out. So it's, I was like, yeah, that's actually a really good point. Like I didn't start Thanks. down this path when I first started lifting weights. Like that actually started way earlier. And I was thinking about the people in my life who like, because I started martial arts when I was five. Yeah. And I did that until I was 14. And I had uh, Sensei Pam Ren. She was just under five foot in oh, the Bay Sensei area. Pam. I like it. Sensei Pam Ren. Yeah. She, <laughs> well, it's kind of cool. Like if you think about the way we do the 3DMJ thing, like we didn't start any sparring until I'd been doing martial arts for like six, seven years. And it was all like she taught us about the history. Um, she lent me a book on Bushido code. We did meditation, we mm -hmm. did stretching, conditioning, and we did um, like katas. It was all very much around the like the martial side and then the art side of it. I mean, sorry, more the art side of it versus the martial side, and uh, very kind of like traditional. And you know, a lot, a lot of it was just trying to get five year olds to, to chill the hell out, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then like you know to to realize that, that combat is the very last resort and. I think she was very much like shaping people to be focused on the bigger picture stuff um, and oh. to be able to focus, which was cool. And then I remember we moved and I went to high school and I started running track and my track coach, shout out to Kevin Morning, um, he was probably the first person to push me to work hard. Like I ran the 400 meters, that was like my race and I was running like 60, 59 like yep. in there, like freshman year. And I just remember like, man, I'd always just, it gets, I could slow down, like it get hard. And then Kevin was just like, looked at me he's like, okay, you know, when you slow down, don't <laughs> just keep going. You have more, trust me. I just want you to, in this next race, just try to keep pushing yourself. And I had this light bulb moment and literally like my next race, it was like 54. Mm. And I was like, Oh crap. Like <laughs> that hurt a lot, but it was worth it. You know? Um, and he was like the first person who introduced me to like weights and taught me how to do a power clean. And I hated it back then. I didn't do it. It wasn't until I, after the Air Force. But uh, he definitely taught me that I had another gear there. But I, I also realized that it's not easy to work hard at something you don't like. Which I honestly didn't really like track. But I think that's a really valuable lesson too. Because mm -hmm. then I was able to apply that to something I really did like when I got into bodybuilding later. And I think some of that last 100 meter go there. Is, is from Kevin. So big shout out to Coach Morning. Why do you think you didn't like power cleaning and stuff then, but then Olympic lifted like 15 years later for funsies? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think I just saw myself differently. Like um, I don't think I had a whole lot of. I didn't like to expose weakness back then. So like if I would, if I didn't think I could be like top track star guy or really, really strong or jacked or anything like that. And it wasn't like um, I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and look stupid in front of people just to be average, you know. Gotcha. So it's really just about your typical kind of teenage insecurity, I think, and want to be cool. Like everything in my brain was like, how can I move up the social hierarchy, you know. <laughs> it's not going to be by looking stupid, power clean, and less weight than other people. So like, I can be the guy who just doesn't care, like whatever, man. So that was kind of probably what was going on in my, my little hormonal brain. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I think in my early twenties, it was more about like, I like I I thought I thought of myself as someone who starts things but never never finishes them, and I was like, what if you just do weightlifting, and no matter how good you are, no matter what, you just take it as far as you can. And then I think I'm not like you know, you know, I'm a Bryce Lewis in powerlifting or a, or a Jeff Alberts in, in bodybuilding, but um, I succeeded a lot more than I thought I would, and uh, really enjoyed it. And I think that was like, that really a huge game changer for me, weightlifting and like lifting weights in general. Um, very much just kind of, I think it made me much more empowered and that I was not any more of the mindset of like, I was basically like, like lightweight, um, like Vince Vaughn from, from dodgeball. Like if you don't try, then <laughs> you'll never fail, you know, kind of thing. So such um, an average I, Joe, your average Eric. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like purposefully, 
You know, not like just accepting of getting what you can, but work hard, like he eventually got to by the end of Dodgeball, which is a wonderful transformational coming of age story. Isn't it? I know. It's um, a legend, really. But, um, but like I was like, that philosophy probably was, was embedded in me for, for, and the only things I'd work hard at were shit I really liked, so I'd play a lot of video games. But anyway, it wasn't through, uh, like lifting, it, was, I didn't, it wasn't until I started lifting weights that I really um, realized that like working hard about something you're passionate and just putting it out there, even if you don't think you're going to be the best, was going to be was a really uh, valuable character building tool. Yeah. Um, well, so if that's like how we kind of all got into like lifting, when does it turn in? Like, who were the people that went from lifting to I want to be a competitive? Well, I like I like that we went in this order because regardless of like your again like the prerequisite to anything good happening you have to fucking work hard yeah. that's just how it is um so you know we go back to like our roots it's like it starts with like being able to yeah really apply yourself to something um and commit to getting better yeah, and like eric said a very important thing make sure it's something that you actually enjoy because even when you do like the task um it fucking sucks sometimes um, yeah, but it's, it's weird how we view the sucking. Because we love it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's, yeah, it's hard, but it's not hard. Person. It's hard, but it's not hard. Yeah. I get, I get rewarded in the middle of it sucking, like it's. Yeah. Uh, I wonder that's what she said so bad like eighteen times in the last five so seconds. <laughs> Uh, like when you get it sucked. I mean, wait. No. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, Michael Scott. I think I the, lo the, the longer you do it, and when you really see the payoff from from busting your ass, um, it's basically the distance between connecting the reward to the hard work closes. You know, like when I was running the last lick of a 400 meters, most of my self talk was, "You don't need to do this. Like, why are you doing this? So you don't even like track, kind of thing." You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fast forward to today it's like you got this you can get one more just keep pushing um you know just basically it's all about motivating myself to actually do the work um because i'm excited about what it will net me in, in return um and i and i see this part of who i am as someone who works hard so it's like being true to myself and motivating myself to get to where i'm trying to go which is completely different than like seeing myself as someone who why are you wasting your time with this dumb shit? Like, you don't even like to run track. Let's go play video games kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Bert, we've established that we, you, learned, you. we learned his children's story yeah. hard. Yep. Super key. Um, well, and I guess the, the next step after that was now we have this thing we want to get really good at. We, we know it's going to take hard work. Um, what's the best way to approach it? And for me, yeah, I initially was the big guy in the gym. And then, yeah, I discovered the internet shortly after that. Magazines first. Um, oh, y'all did the magazines first. Yeah. But magazines oh, were, yeah. even then, they were so, even the monthly ones, like Muscular Development and Flex, they were so, the pace was so slow. And to be honest, like, when I would look at those physiques, I just, I couldn't relate to it. Um, yeah. Like, like, I knew that a big component of that because at this point I was pretty set that I just, I didn't want to take drugs. It was like the drug part. So mm -hmm. it was really hard for me to connect with that. And uh, I think the first, so I actually would read more men's health. Like, than, oh, okay. Like, yeah. So I, I would go with those, but then eventually, you know, it's like, so I want something that's, uh, you know, I want to not just look good to get laid. Like I, I want to really like learn okay. about how this stuff works and, and push myself to, you know, just like any other sport. And yeah, the internet um, is the first thing that came to mind, many different websites. Um, but then what really changed things for me was, this was as dynamic as it got back then, and we brought this up over and over, was when I discovered message board forums. Mm -hmm. So it was like a collection of all the biggest guys from, you know, from, all, from gyms all over the world, basically. Um, you would build community. And initially it was, yeah, it was how I, uh, mostly through working, not necessarily posting questions, is how I got a lot of my foundation when it comes to yeah how things work. Because this is before Facebook. 
and all that. Yeah. Right? Or it was Facebook was like still for college kids. Like I was on Facebook, but y'all probably couldn't yet. Yeah, like two thousand four. Like, yeah. Oh seven or oh eight was when Facebook started to kind of pop up. As to a go with everyone else, yeah, because y'all weren't in college. I say I was on Facebook when I was like nineteen, like two thousand four, two thousand five. But it I had to be like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, you had to have your uh, online. That's how it was. Yeah. You had to have a university email. Yeah. Yeah, early early days. I think that was like two thousand four, two thousand five ish. But even then, like Facebook didn't have its like these little communities within Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Facebook. yeah, it was yeah, like just do, other kids at your school and shit. Yeah. yeah. Because it wasn't really until 2010 or so that people started migrating from the forums to Facebook. Gotcha. When our, our little community died. Um, so, maybe even 2011, actually. Yeah. And that's where you guys met each other. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and yeah. a lot of our influencers, too. Like I'd say that like my first actual solid person that I learned from was probably Lay Norton. And it was, it, this takes, it was like, I was just wrapping up being a teenager. So he, he did most of his work on the teenage pilybuilding.com. That was their, uh, their, uh, yeah, their, um, their smaller, uh, website. Uh, eventually that closed down and I found my, I found myself in bodybuilding.com, but like Lane was definitely like the first person that, Hey, there's, there's a place for the thinking man, which I think mm-hmm. prior to that. Um, that's just something that um, it didn't really seem like a clear option when it came to anything bodybuilding. And I really, I really enjoyed, um, yeah, just having a firm understanding of how things work. Um, so this is going to yeah. sound dumb, but it's going to sound dumb and I'm going to get shit for it. But, but now, <laughs> or since I became interested in, in physique sport and found you guys and all that stuff, everyone wants to know. Um, what the research I, and I could be wrong because I'm in like this community but everyone's like well what does the research say or what does the evidence say or what's the best or what have you found and blah 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 but before that when you say it's for the thinking man like so before the whole no, lane thing it hasn't changed it's, it hasn't changed no it's you still need to go like, to an expo you'll, um, you'll be like oh there's that douchebag on Instagram with 400k followers that's and right out the door. because there's a thing yeah. on Netflix that went over physique guys <laughs> And Brandon and I tried to watch it for 20 minutes and we died. They were like, I can't say it. I can't quote it. But like every 10 minutes, I was like, this is real. People still think this. This was like oh, last year. Yeah. yeah, I guess. So, that, But that's how it was everywhere before 2010. Everyone was just no. like, you look at a the jack dude and you see what good, he does. I wanna, yeah, I don't want to downplay it. The difference is now there's actually a, it's not like these little blips on the radar of people who value that. Um it's actually there's a community for people who value like being a thinking man's bodybuilder like okay. more thinking and I'm just bodybuilder in it, like sort of, so. and I've like just yeah. kind of clouded all the other shit okay but there wasn't even really a community for it before like it wasn't that connected it was just like oh shit that dude sounds smart and like I like his style and how many people would be like whatever bro just lift like just do what Dexter Jackson does kind of thing and but they were just all in the same room you know fighting each other and now we've yeah. segregated ourselves a lot more <laughs> okay so. they were yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't now, imagine. You, like, I wonder. If you try to go in like the opposite cruise thing, and you post, you'll just get shouted down by ten thousand followers, or in ours, like a thousand followers, because we're smaller. But yeah. I wonder if I would have tried to look, like, if I had um, been interested in physique sport like five or ten years earlier, would I have just like not done it because of reading that shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm- I'm actually grateful that I came up on the, like, right right before the magazines died, because that's how I got exposed to Dr. Joe. Mm-hmm. So, like, Where natural bodybuilding and fitness. Now, he, he, he was, the like, the science guy writing in Natural Bodybuilding and Fitness magazine. Okay. Um, and I think, to be honest, Dr. Joe and some of the other people who used to write for Natural Bodybuilding and Fitness is the reason why it seems like, to me, it's no, no disrespect to the other side of the fence, but... The natural bodybuilding community is typically more open to and interested in, um, like, research learning. in general. Um, not necessarily that. It's just who do they get their learning sources from. Like, you know, IFBB guys and the NPC and the whole kind of enhanced side is big on passing of knowledge and learning from, like, the guru. It's just that they don't really value, uh, like, empirical research to the same degree. It's I all, think like, we're kind of different definitions of learning, though. 
Like there's, you know what I mean? Like when I think learning, I think like figuring out and, and aggregating like a, a large amount of information from different things and making my own conclusion and going forth with it. Whereas on the flip side, it's like, oh, so-and-so said that and that's where I got my knowledge, so I'm going to do that. Like, you know, I, I don't think it's always that blind, though. I, I think yeah. I think there is value in learning. Um, I think it's just that, and maybe it's because the enhanced side of the sport is a lot more alienated from society, and it doesn't. It's not as mm. connected to like normal fitness. Yeah. Um, that uh, that that's not necessary. Like they're just like whatever. Like no one's going to do studies for us or whatever. So I, I don't know. Yeah, that would suck. Um, yeah, like how are you going to learn how to do a drug cycle to become 300 pounds? Like it's not, there's not, there's no study on that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, Good um, point. yeah. So I, anyway, but early on natural bodybuilding and fitness, I, they, they would have like, if you had a CSCS, you'd have that after your name when you wrote an article for NBNF and like Dr. Joe would be in there all the time. So I think, cause it was sometime in like, two, like 2005, 2006, I really hadn't committed to the idea of stepping on stage or or being natural or really thought about it. And then it was like in mid-2006, I had a lot of support from the YMCA crew, who I was a personal trainer at. They were all really awesome and kind of introduced me to it. And there was a gentleman who had myself and my one of my training partners, Cody, be test judges at a WBS show. And that's when I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. And I think it was like the Iron State something. I can't remember what it was. But uh, Rodney Hilaire was one of the, uh, the, the, the judges. And, um, and and I saw the overall winner who got us up into a pro card, and I was like, oh, shit, this is awesome. And it's probably good for me to have some kind of, like, delineation between w- what I w- will and won't do for safety as far as competing. And I love this look anyway. Like, I was a big fan of Frank Zane. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll do the natural bodybuilding thing. And, and so I was looking at magazines because I was reading, like, muscular development and flex all the time. And then when I was, like starry eyed new guy who decided to do natural bodybuilding. I was like, oh my God, there's a natural magazine. And I buy them like every single month they came out. And that's when I got introduced to Dr. Joe. And around the same time, um, there was, uh, yeah, Lane Norton by, by far was the kind of the first influence. It was like Lane and Dr. Joe from the start for me. Yeah. And then shortly after that, more like influences from the internet became pretty, pretty key. What happened to the forums? Like it's just kind of like a... They're People still there. just drifted just, off. Well, I know they exist still, but Facebook groups happen to the forums. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And now Instagram. Not even that. I th- I think um, there's a, there's there's a different Facebook community that's on. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a different community on on uh, who engages a lot and likes to talk on Facebook groups than than us on Instagram. Yeah. Because you just won't see the same level of, of back and forth um, in Instagram. Yeah, posts. you can't follow trails the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 And um, people can it, type on their computer like novel, like little mini novels, and no one's gonna like really do it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, but exactly. yeah, yeah, good point. Like, I actually don't think. I think it's, the funny thing is, I don't think the groups are quite as good as the forums were. They're not really set up. Like, if you want to try to search and find an old post, it doesn't really do that. Um, the feed is not quite as intuitive, and like the only thing that's nice is you can tag people. Mm-hmm. So that's how you can keep things going on Facebook. But I actually think the original forums are still a better vehicle for those group discussions. It's just that no one's going to be there because of the vast majority of people to actually talk with left. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, I, I think like if someone on the Facebook team was like, hey, I think I can make these groups a little better by emulating the old school forums, people would be at it again and doing logs. Like it's hard to keep a log on Facebook. Because yeah. you don't have your own thread that you keep posting it over and over again. Like, you just get lost in the whole entire group. So, like, as a group gets bigger and bigger and bigger, like, good luck, you know? Yeah. Okay. One of my athletes uses Reddit a lot. Hey, oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a good point, one, actually. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know. I'm not on that, that Reddit tip, so I have really no idea. I just know it's big. It mm-hmm. seems, uh, it looks like a forum when mm-hmm. you go on there. Anyway, so I want to be a bodybuilder now. Not me. I'm talking about you guys, really. Um, not that sounded bad. Like, I'm talking about in y'all's next step, because I'm still, yeah. y'all have, like, two more steps from, like, 2005 to 2010 before me. So, like, in that yeah. little range, and you're like, I do want to compete. There's Lane and Dr. Joe and just forums. 
when you say I went out to the, the rest of the internet, like what else did you look at? I'm assuming like well, yeah. well Lyle? those two guys were were like catalysts for like, hey, start like thinking about this, like start being like resourceful. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, they were two major influences, but what they made me do and what I'm most thankful for is not necessarily something specific they taught me, but yeah, they taught me how to think. And right. and it, it because of those guys, I just remember many nights just like staying up until a very unreasonable time, knowing that I have to wake up early the next day, just like down the rabbit hole, like just, I can't put down the information basically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, after after both of, both of those guys, yeah, it, it led me to other corners that I don't think, man, I don't think I, I would have found, I, would, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have found those places without them or at least not as quickly. Um, and they're just so hidden that it's, 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 to me, it's not a mystery as to why the majority of people who get into this never find themselves, um, I guess, being a thinking person's bodybuilder. All right. Th this is going to be funny. So I started on the forums, um, different forums, rapmusic.com and oh, yeah. bboys.com in the late 90s and early 2000s and we used to have like battle leagues and i'd record stuff but they also had like text leagues because not everyone had a good mic in the early 2000s and honestly not everyone could actually rap they could just write lyrics <laughs> um so we would have these intense battle leagues and crews where you would battle each other and i got really interested in people arguing online on the bodybuilding.com forums because it was that it was the same kind of thing you know and so i would and you get rewarded for having, like, you can't really shout someone down on a forum. Like, someone can troll and post a lot, but you can just, whatever, you ignore them, you message a mob, they get booted. Like, if you're good at, at making your case and arguing, you kind of, that cream rises to the crop. Um, sorry, the crop. You stand wait. out? Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the cream of the crop, and the cream rises to the top. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Um, good rap. Like, as if, as an example, that wasn't a good rap. Yeah. Uh, as an example, um, Blaine Norton and Alan Aragon were mods on uh, on bodybuilding.com back in the day. And moderators for those they, who are... moderators yes. for, for the noobs who don't know and don't have a green a big green rep bar. Uh, they were they were like like gods in terms of like they had the answer to everything. Uh, they were super like I, I learned skepticism and critical thinking from watching those guys deal yeah. with interactions. Um, I think like Birdo, I didn't, I wasn't asking the right questions. I wasn't really fully understanding how the whole science thing worked. Uh, I was getting there. Um, but I learned that through the way that, uh, some of those dudes were interacting online. And, uh, so I would say those are some of my earliest mentors was watching people argue and then eventually becoming the person arguing, like mm -hmm. arguing with people on the vitamin.com forums was, was probably a huge part of my developmental skills as a rational thinker. That's awesome. Yeah. Because they would give longer explanations, right? This was before like they all had their own blogs and, and shit like that. Right. It mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. someone asked a question and I know I would look up like Dr. Joe back then. I don't, I don't think I read his shit till like much later till the diet doc website, like way later. But like, I, I know that I, when I was first searching on Bible.com and with C Lane's videos and stuff, you could see like old posts of his and I was never in them, but it was always like someone asking a dumb question and he wouldn't be shitty about it. Then he would just have like a really long explanation. And I think that's where the thinking man comes in is like, I'm biased. Because, like, like having long form anything, right? Like social media and like quicker things and like Facebook or Instagram. It's like, you have a sentence or two, you have a sentence or two, but I guess like on the forums and, and back then when people would like really spend time at their computer on the internet, it was like you could write paragraphs. Lane Norton had Q&A threads. It was just him answering Ooh, questions Yeah, uh, that were on the muscular development forums, mm -hmm. uh, the bottom.com forums. I think maybe to think muscle. There was, there was another big one, but he was on like, a handful of forums with in, in a moderator on most of them and had Q&A threads where he would literally for, for, for years just answered everyone's questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so like, you know, people get salty over, over Lane cause he like, he posts about his political thoughts and you know, that you don't agree with his met- metabolic damage and all that stuff. But to some degree, you can't forget the fact that if you messaged him between 2004 and 2010, or you wanted to ask a question, he would get back to you within a day on, across five forums. And there was <laughs> probably 10,000 people that like messaging him on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. He did. He did his pro bono work early on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, um, yeah. But I think when I think the thinking man, it's that, that when I I think about my evolution and the difference was like being a kid was. You guys said it earlier. It was like I, I was asking the wrong questions, but I think I wanted different kinds of answers when I was an immature thinker versus now. Mm. Um. And I think yeah. that that's, if that's nothing that reading things on the internet that weren't social media, um, and now I'm in my thirties, like I, I would much rather do a book or a podcast like this or a three hour or whatever, or an audio book or like I, and I think that's how you learn to be a thinker is hearing other people think like hearing the, the processes of shit. And if I don't know if it's a youth thing or just I was I didn't know yet until grad school, but I was always give me one sentence that tells me what to do. Oh, and man. now I'm I so like, relate to that. Yeah. And and I'll get I like remember. frustrated that Yes. Yeah. And I'm, like quit quit just 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 give me the answer. Yeah. Like, quit fucking around. Like you're not helping, mm-hmm. I'm not learning. You're 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 a bad teacher. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember going back and forth with Alan Aragon just trying to get him to tell me how many grams of carbs and how many grams of protein should I have before I work out and after and how many hours prior? And he was just like, well, it depends on the volume. And I'm like, well, you, you know, sometimes like carbohydrates like aren't And I was just, and this is like 2006, so I, or maybe even five. And I was like just not interested in trying to figure out why or why it mattered, mm-hmm. which is such a stark contrast to the way I think now. And I was just like, dude. I'm just trying to get huge, bro. Like, <laughs> like, just what should I have? All right. I know it's that simple. Like, there's one answer for everyone, and it'll make me jacked. And you're keeping it from me because you're a dick, you know. <laughs> so, see, and, and now, like, if I, if I discover something that works, like, I'm not just happy with that. I need to know why. Hmm. And when I was at that stage, it wasn't like that. Like things were working, but I didn't really care to go through the layers. And then, yeah, like changing the way I think. Do you think that's because I, you were coaching now or wanted to coach? Like if you never wanted to coach uh-huh. and things are working, would you be like, sweet, yeah. I know it works for me? Or is No, it like I don't because okay. there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. I, I will lose interest in things very quickly if, if it's just that. Um, so no, no. Yeah. I am too obsessive about certain things and yeah, no, but yeah, no, I've been, I've been in that position and I, I still, I get those messages frequently and I, I have to take a, I have to take a step back and like, remember that I have, I've been that person. Um, and just learn to be a little bit more patient but a, sometimes. Yeah. But in a weird way, you have to, it's not cool, right? It doesn't feel good to look at your DMs and there's like 40 of them and you're like, shit, I can't get to these. I don't want to be an asshole. But a lot of them are repetitive. I've answered them for free on the internet somewhere. Or, you know, like you get kind of irritated. But at the same time, I'm like, now I can look back at those times when I was ignored or not given the answer I wanted or whatever and been like, I'm glad because I had to figure Mm -hmm. that shit out for myself. And that's like, yeah, you know, no, but at the at the that. time I was not pissed, but like I would be like, "Oh my god, I find somebody. And this is the person I should be listening to, and they're gonna give me the answer." And I'm like, maybe leave a comment on their blog post that they wrote five years ago from then, and they don't reply to it. And I'm like, Fuck, if they would have just told me, like, why won't they just? Tell me? I'm not mad Such at them. Such a dick. Never meet yeah. your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's like I forgot about it, and I moved on, and I figured it out. And I'm um, better for it. Um, but then you still kind of feel bad. But then, you know, like, who am I to tell another person my age or even older sometimes? Mm-hmm. Like, 
one, I don't have time, yeah. and two, if you figure it on your own, it'll be better, and three, like, yeah. I don't, you know, like, it sounds real elitist and shit, but... Well, I, 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 I ask people, and they, they'll thank me, like, later on. Yeah. Like, I'm like, so what has your personal uh, research taught you so far? And often they're like, I, I, you are it. And I'm like, dude, that's not good enough. Like you, that's a good you have question. to be skeptical. You have to be skeptical of, of me. Um, and sometimes they get pissed off, but quite frequently they will come back and they're like, thank you so much for like, for, for sending me in that direction. And every question afterwards is just such a better question now. Yeah, absolutely. I follow that same track. Like, um, I went from being annoyed with Alan Aragon not just telling me what the answer was for post-workout nutrition to then getting, oh shit, there are no the answers and I'm not growing as fast as I want. Oh, I mean, and I want to become a coach now. I got to learn everything. And then like the exact things that annoyed me became the exact things I craved. So I remember, I, so I started, I think probably the first place I started reading voraciously was bodyrecomposition.com. I started reading all of yeah. McDonald's yeah. stuff. And I can, and, he, and there's a lot to read because he'd been active for a while. Mm -hmm. So I started getting his books and reading everything on there, occasionally posting and getting yelled at by Lyle. Um, <laughs> it was it was good. Um, yeah, that was probably Lean around like, 2007. Too Lean Games was a good blog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that wasn't a huge one for me, but it, that's there was some definitely real quality stuff Martin put out. Eric, yeah, remember think, the, the the hidden forum? Lyle's hidden yep. forum. Yeah, he still has a forum. forum. And then, but there was a hidden forum. Oh. Yeah, there, there's the, there's the one me. where if you want to be a sociopath, you go. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just the guys and gals who have no patience at all and just want to talk science. And if you're wrong, you're like you're allowed to swear and cuff people out and and all the stuff <laughs> that a, a moderator would normally remove you for are just like the way you communicate there. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it's a wonderfully think. toxic place. Yeah. Well, for me, it was Lyle's site. Uh, Lean Gains was interesting because it was around, like, because Lyle's rapid fat loss, or what is it, 2.0? Uh, Ultimate Diet 2.0, rapid yeah. fat loss. Yeah, those ones. And then, because Martin was also talking about intermittent fasting and manipulating carbs and, like, giant amounts, you know, and stuff like that. And I found, and of course, I just had to figure out which days were my hard carb days, and I was going to get lean and jacked at the same time, is what I was thinking. Um, another one for me was like Pauline Nordine's website, uh, but it was very emotional mm. and like, but I liked, like she was very, uh, contrarian and like she had competed before, but she didn't like the cycle of getting lean and then fluffy and lean and fluffy. And she was like, so I'm going to look and feel awesome all the time. So I'm going to eat a bajillion vegetables, like the whole fighter diet thing, right? I'm just going to eat vegetables and protein and train twice a day. Like, she was like training her ass off and like lightweight dieting all the time, but feeling full because mm -hmm. she ate all these vegetables and I'm sure her stomach hurt all the time. But, um, but it was like, I could do that. And so then, um, I don't know. So those were like three sites that I frequented a lot early on. Bodymon.com, I think because I was in grad school now, like was sort of learning this critical thinking thing. It bothered me that I could read 10 articles on the same topic They'd all be by someone different, and they'd all say something different. That bothered me, so I didn't really fuck with bodyone.com very much. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I was in the forums every day from '05 until 2010 or 11, but I don't know that I've ever read a bodyone.com article. <laughs> they were like, it, yeah. it was weird to me because you could search by topic, and I'm like, how are there 20 articles on the same topic, and nobody agrees with anybody? Like, this isn't making sense. Same websites for you, Bert? Like when you said you're getting stuck in the internet, at least early on, like 05 to like 2010-ish or whatever. Yeah, but I moved on, like like you, the same thing with the bodybone.com articles. I would be like, this doesn't make sense because this per they're both jacked and they're saying like different things. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I needed the human interaction. So, um, so yeah, it was forums and then forums uh, eventually. And it kind of resembles like what the forums did for me, like my – without skipping ahead too far, um, how life is for me now. Like I needed that interaction with people who were fans of, uh, of thinking. Um, and like when I look at, when, when I look up, <laughs> when I look at my current situation, that's, 
Like for example, I'm I'm going over to Brian Miner's house. Uh, we're gonna have dinner today, and uh, we will we'll most likely be talking about these sort of things. You know, mm. um, so it's it's yeah. I think it uh, and there was a lot of individuals on those forums that kind of they they grew up so to speak to be major influencers when it comes to to this side of the the fitness world. Yeah. So, um, yeah. My friends, my friends were super important in my upbringing. I think I very, um, for me, I read those three, maybe there are five, maybe there's a couple I'm not mentioning, but there might've been like three or three to five, um, that I think like I could read, like you said, like just article after article after article. But then, then it was like, I had to look for people because no other site like was as a, you know, like Lyle shit is a body of his work and, you know, and, and Martin's and Pauline's or whatever, like these are the bodies of their work. But outside of that, all the sites are like, again, multi-contributor kind of things or like magazine yeah. sites or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what I would do then instead, I think was, and I never thought about this way, but now that we're having this conversation about it, I think then I would look for female figure athletes who looked how I wanted to look. And then I would read like their interviews anywhere they were online. You know, or like oh. watch their videos. So like it was like Ava Cowan. Pauline was another one. I looked for her outside. Um, Oksana, Grish the, the fitness girl. Grishina, Grishina, whatever. Yeah. Didn't know all these people were FB and that there was a natural thing that was different or whatever. But I would still like, I at least knew, okay, the female IFBB bodybuilder pro girls, like I don't want to look like that. That's not natural. I knew that. But the figure girls, I was like, they're not that, that big. Maybe, you know. Um, I didn't know the difference between Natty and not. But I just knew like those girls look awesome and they tend to yeah. always look awesome, <laughs> which again, didn't know why that was, but I was like, they look this great all the time, plus or minus five pounds. Like how was this even? Um, so I would just look for them and like, okay, she weighs a little more than me. So maybe I could just eat a little less than her and do her workouts. Like this will work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would go to the gym twice a day. I would do Mind you, I had no I had no intention of competing yet, but I would like get up, do like go to do. I lived in Houston at the time. This is like right before grad school, I think, or it was like oh, this whole like year or two period. I'd get up, I'd go to twenty four hour fitness and like run or elliptical for forty five minutes to an hour, go home, get ready, go to coach gymnastics, um, shower, change, go work in the kids club at twenty four hour fitness, and then stay there and do like my weight training at night, which then was like what I knew was like a gymnastic circuits with lightweight, like maybe light dumbbells, but like mostly body weight stuff. Um, and not understand why I didn't look like Ava Cowan, damn it, with my 10 pound dumbbells. Mm. I just didn't get it. But I was working real hard, spending a lot of time. <laughs> when you're being resourceful, that's, I think that's-, that's And I ha you know what's funny is I have all the notebooks, like I still have those with me today, like 45 minutes elliptical, three sets of like, uh, 20 lunges with dumbbells, uh, like 40 squat jumps and like 15 push-ups, And like, <laughs> like I was, uh, that's what I would do. I was like shit mm. like that until you guys ever, um, you guys T nation fans. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was talk I... about like inconsistency. <laughs> that was, see, that was, I was trying to think about it. Cause I was like, just like Andrea, I was always following people because yeah. the, the multi-contributor sites were normally trash. So I was, you know, like, Teenage was like dudes, though. Like, I couldn't relate to it, but go ahead. It's very, I can't like, male. Why. I just like, I know. You but, like, it, it was, like, it <laughs> no, was, was out no of my head. There was no there. It yeah. Was, that was, it was oh, super, yeah. But, um, yeah, Teen Nation was the first time I became aware, because all of a sudden, like, it was doing its thing, it was doing its thing, and then everyone started, like, it became the code word for bro science, basically. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's some bullshit Teen Nation stuff. And mm -hmm. I was like, what happened? And I realized that they were one of the first masquerading fake evidence-based places. You what know, do you mean? I'll explain. So Please they would do. have, so they had some good articles. They had like an article from Brad Schoenfeld, they had an article from Alan Aragon. Um, they would have some good stuff from some people who really aren't aren't that good. I'm not going to name names. And then a whole lot of stuff from people who were working in buy our supplements into the articles. Mm, okay. So they, they would get thinkers in and then use like the, the appeals to authority of they have these, these, these trainers 
sometimes people weren't even training people, they were saying they were training, uh, who were good writers and knew enough science to be dangerous, um, but half the time were actually just shilling and were pushing things like, you know, anaconda or um, mega dosing fish oil and stuff like that. So there, there, like there were some awesome writers there, like Dan John consistently wrote great stuff on T Nation. But then you'd have like, you know, Paula Quinn on there and, and other people who were, uh, like I remember the Anaconda Protocol. Like there was some dumb stuff on there, you know. So there was, and all of a sudden, uh, and, I, and they were editing people's articles without actually asking them. I think that's what came up is like. Uh, you're Alan or Brett, or is it a few people who are like credible people who'd wrote and they're like, they've changed my stuff a little bit to make it a little more sexy. And so they, they all of a sudden, like, like if you went on the, on Monkey Island, like people were just ripping apart Teen Nation articles. What is Monkey and it Island? Was, that's the mean forum for, for, uh, oh, for the wild forums. Forum. You gotta, you gotta track with it. Track with Dude, it. Monkey was, Island was the, the hidden I was forum. I was boot camping. We Stop it. It's all good. We were, we were. <laughs> We were yelling. We were being yelled at by a, an avatar of a monkey. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, like that. That was probably the first time I, I realized, oh shit, like people can actually manipulate this whole evidence-based thing and like pretend to be science, you know. Um, well, I think you think for a long time they can't put wrong stuff on the internet, right? Like, like yeah. subconsciously, yeah. you're like, if it made it on the internet. Because, like, now anyone can be on the internet. And, like, but then anyone could. You just didn't know that anyone could. Like, someone had to know how to use a computer. Someone had, like, mm. it wasn't as, as like, as easy Well, there's barriers. You had to be, like, yeah. selected, you know? I think you were talking about this, about this recently when you were on the Nova podcast. Like, now you can just make yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I am marketable. I have a physique. And here's my own. In, like, I chose myself to be great. Dude, thanks and you for should listening to my me. interview. That's nice. I listen to all our stuff. That's so nice. Um, but but uh, yeah, like back then, like T Nation had to be like you have to you like I wrote I wrote an article and sent it to Bible .com. They didn't take it this time, but I know what to improve upon. You know, I'm gonna get out there. You know. Yeah. And um, so like all the people who wrote for T Nation looked the part, or or said they had the clientele behind them, and also could or talk. Or had letters talk. next to their name. Sometimes, yeah. So a combination of all of one or, or multiple of those things. Um, so they were, they were like, T Nation became like, oh, these are the leaders in the strength and conditioning community. Like, there's a lot of s &C stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, so when I started to realize that it was all being blended in with, like, shilling for their, uh, their, their supplements, I was like, oh, shit. And that's when I, I think that was another step in me becoming more, more of a critical thinker. And uh, I started reading more of Lyle's stuff. And it's funny, like, before I wanted to just get, just tell me what to do. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be science back, but just tell me what to do. Like, once you have, I've ticked the box next to you. And with Lyle, if you ever read any of his books, you've got to make it through, like, three chapters of physiology <laughs> before you learn anything useful, you know? Yeah. Um, and I liked that, which was a pretty, pretty big uh, m mentality shift, I think. Yeah. I don't – I can't tell if we, like, grew up, became better thinkers, or are smarter in our field. Or all of the above. You know, when people think that I'm smart, I'm like, what? <laughs> I just kept reading. Um, you know what I mean? Um, uh, I think we're, one thing I think all of us share is we're good at identifying uh, the trait of skepticism and rational thinking in someone. Because, like, learning to do science, I've seen it time and time again. That's not necessarily the thing that's going to allow you to identify good versus bad information. Like, I'm only one of the PhD here, but we're all talking about some good sources of information eventually, you know. And I think it's because we could, we're logical, rational thinkers who have enough skepticism to be like, that kind of sounds like bullshit, but that doesn't. I'm going to listen to more what that person says, you know. Yeah. I think that's the first step for most people is you start to, um, if you do it right, you start to follow someone who emulates those characteristics and then you can start to use the, then you start to adopt the same way they think mm. to then learn stuff more on your own. Yeah. The, uh, and uh, even if it goes against the grain a bit, because sometimes the person who's making sense for tradition, they don't look the part. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and once you're like, dude, this Jack dude is saying this, but that just don't sound right and then ian mccarthy over here is like actually making sense to you it's like ah let me 
maybe not overlook what's coming from this side. So to me, that was a big one because Lane Norton, like he was jacked, but there was people on those forums that were even more jacked. But Lane just made more sense to me. So whenever he would dispense information, it was I felt much safer considering what he was saying. So there's yeah. this, yeah, there's this guy, Austin Cleon. I've talked about it all the time. I think to Eric a lot. He wrote this book called Steal Like a Nurse. But anyways, my favorite mm -hmm. thing he says, which is definitely correct English, um, and he's like, you don't want to look like your heroes. You want to see like them. And that just mm -hmm. like hits me so hard every time because it's like we copy people, but it, like at first you copy because you want to mm -hmm. be them, but then it's actually like you you need to try what they're doing so that you can see what they see. And you need to read their long form or listen to them talk at, a, at absurd yeah. amounts so that you can understand why they view things in this way. Yeah, not just what did they say, but how did they come to that? Yeah, yeah and, the, and that's why the book... If you don't know... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead. No, I'm saying that's why it's like steal like an artist. It's like, yeah, there, there's copying, like blatant copying, which doesn't really get you anywhere, or it's the same as being like, tell me what to do, right? Because yeah. of all your hard work, yeah. when it's like actually... You need to hear why they're telling you this, so that you can understand it, so that you can carry that going forth. And so, oh, like, man, I it's get a bothered. Book. I get bothered when someone copies my shit and just posts it as their own, which yeah. happens all the time. All the time. But I don't get threatened because mm -hmm. they, don't they have need me mm -hmm. to copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're they're gonna wait until I put something good out to copy it. They can't do what I do. Yeah. Obviously, or they wouldn't be copying me. They they know enough to know it's good, but like you said, they don't necessarily have your lens. The, yeah, the lens to to put things together to then produce. You know, uh, or so maybe they do, and they're just lazy. But I, I doubt it. You know, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's exactly right. That that's you you should just not not only just vet somebody and then follow them blindly. Um, I guess it's not blindly if you vetted them for being like rational thinker, but. Don't just take the step to vet somebody and then follow them like I originally did. Like, learn from their their way that they see things because I think that that's going to unlock a whole new level of learning for you. Because I know that then I started to I kept finding more and more people because I wanted to get a broader uh, scope of, of like learning that and try to accelerate that. I remember when I found uh, James Krieger's stuff on insulin and then body composition analysis on weight on the old weightology. Those still there. Were like. Yeah, I was like, these are amazing. James Krieger's the, the smartest man in the world. Um, shout out to James Krieger. And, uh, JK. JK, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, and it's... And then Matt, Matt, Matt Perryman, who's not around anymore. I was a big oh, fan of his stuff. Matt so really, was yeah, fired. He went in. He went in. I don't know yeah. who that is. Squat every day. The original. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Shit. Oh, okay. So, so as far as like thinking too, right? Like it went from, like we said, these these sites, and then deciphering, and then like, okay, we look at people, and then on acts or like a, a the thing I fell into then was like I've selected these not on purpose three to ten people, and so everything they say is right, mm. and um. Then I just like looking backwards again, realize like five years later, it was like in the last few years, like I can tell I'm a better thinker now because there's not a single person that I think everything they say is right for me or for anyone, you know, like there's people, well, except for me. obviously, no, but there's people that, um, you'd be one of them where like, I, I think we agree on like probably the highest percentage of of anything, right? Me and the four of you guys, like I, I would say of the four of y'all, we agree on some high level on like the 90%, but not everything, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. not that we don't disagree, but like we just have different angles mm -hmm. and it's yeah. not, there's nothing that any one of y'all can tell me that 100% I just blindly follow. Not because I don't believe y'all or anything. It's just because I'm a different person. But then there's yeah. all those people like in the industry, if you look at 20 people of my favorites say, we might, um, I might agree with say 60 to 90% of, of what they put out, but not all of it. And I mm. think that that's a, I'm proud of that now, whereas I used to be like, those are my people and they're my go-tos. And, and, I, and I needed that step, right? Because I needed these people to tell me how to think. But again, it's like, at some point you deduce like, of these five amazing people, 
person one who I always agree with and person four who I always agree with don't see on this certain thing. So therefore, yeah. one of them is wrong. And it's like, well, no, they're both are smart. They, you know, and so it's like this this cycle of constant like discernment of of making your own opinion, right? Because you can have an opinion. Yeah. It's like at first, if you have an opinion too early, it's probably fucking wrong or mis <laughs> like misinformed. Um, and then you learn all these, which we all did, like when we were all personal trainers, we were like, bro, what you got to do is, and we were all wrong, um, or we didn't understand it. And then later on, it's like, now we can all say like, not what you got to do is, but like, here are some things you can do, you know? And I think that that's a mm -hmm. big difference. Mm -hmm. I think people love them, and they still love today too, when people they follow disagree. Um, some people would just, it just oh, like when it's off. you versus Mike all the time. <laughs> well, like it started out as just let's have these roundtables, and people loved them. On I remember the forums we used to have. There used to be roundtables. People would discuss stuff, and you'd see like all the different, uh, you know, mid mid to late two thousands people. And I would just eat that stuff up because I remember I was we started man. I we got a three DMJ subscription to the Alan Ergod's Research Review in like late two thousand nine. Yeah, and that's when I really started to learn how to like critically analyze studies by emulating like the way Aaron thought about them. And then I was watching Lane argue with people online, and then I was reading Dr. Joe's um, magazine post, and then I was reading James's stuff and Lyle. So then when the, like a, a roundtable would come out where it wasn't settled and they all had different things to say, I was like, oh my god! Like, it, was, <laughs> it was like you know the dream team in the in uh, like the NBA kind of thing. Um, and that hasn't gone away. Like, I think eventually marketers realized, I oh, think people really like that. And then if you remember, like, the Epic Fitness, where they had, like, the verses started happening. Like, someone yeah. had, like, the, <clears throat> I don't know, 2013 or 14. That's when people were, like, James Krieger versus John Kiefer, you know, in a death match about insulin. Uh, so, JK you know, versus Gary JK. Tops, it was, and then, you know, wow. one actually was JK about showing up, and Kiefer never even showed up. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Pulled a hamstring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For this interview. <laughs> um, yep. And then, you know, like, Tobbs versus Alan Aragon. My then, first then, one was you and Alan on Ian McCarthy's channel. The Protein Roundtable. Fuck, I remember I was, being in, I was in Norman, Oklahoma, 2011-ish. And I was like, man, this child is getting these amazing, epic humans on his YouTube. But see, when I you like that, you've gotten to the point where you you understand that there is there's very few truths, you know, mm. and you want to see the back and forth because um, you can see you can in a good discussion you can see both parties kind of develop as they go on, and like you can see them getting something out of this. Mm -hmm. And and you get a ton of that residue, uh, you know, rubbing off on you. So I can see why it's so uh, for someone like me. And I think when you've gone to the point where you have these two dudes go, like squaring off or or dude or do that. And yeah, maybe you're more partial to this guy. But this other guy is making points that make sense to you. And you're like, ah, that's. I'm actually kind of, that's when you know you're in a very, very good place. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, like when you're excited about that because they're they're poking at the edges of uncertainty and kind of mm -hmm. forming this, this, in, this consensus between two different types of critical thinkers with different knowledge sets and backgrounds, but on the same area. You know, like, yeah, if you sat through us talking for two hours about the finer points of the thermic effect of high-protein diets, then... Whew, you know you're you, you you made it you know so. well i think the first step beyond are you excited about listening to this is like i still think it's really fucking strange how nobody can sit through long form things like i think that i feel i feel like that's a barrier like if you can't read past a two minute blog post and if you can't watch more than a five minute youtube video you don't care about this thing that much that's yeah. what i think that's my opinion yeah yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. or you're just too immature, or or maybe, maybe yeah, you might just be lesson. young. But I mean, like as an adult who says I want to compete in this thing, like that might be a, a red flag if you can't take anything longer than five minutes to add to your repertoire of knowledge. I don't. I, that said, I think there is there's a distinction. There's a distinction between wanting to be 
Alberto Nunez, Andrew Valdez, Eric Helms, or wanting to be a high-level athlete, and you know that requires being some level of a student of the sport. Yeah. Um, like, like let's say you have no interest in coaching, and you're and you're really just trying to figure out how this applies to you. I think you need to be willing to to go to go deep a little bit, but like just because you want to race a car doesn't necessarily mean you need to be a combustion engineer or even a mechanic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think it. Then it, I think beyond that, it goes to like what you want to hear about. Like I don't mm. need to hear the thermic effect or whatever the fuck to to help my athlete, um, not even my athlete, to help my Gen Pop client lose fifty pounds. Like I don't need that, but I I True. do need, I think, to maybe read a book on human behavior if I have in person obese clients. Like yeah. like I don't I think whatever it is that's appropriate. I think it still is. Um, so again, other than you being really young or very, very new, my opinion is still like, if you can't get past 10 minutes or three pages, then you probably don't have a career in this thing or a very invested interest in it. Cause there's shit that I barely care about that I'll read a book on just to like kind of, you know, not 10 books well, and not 10 hours, but like. I feel like the questions that we we said at the beginning, those questions in the DMs, it's like really like you. There's no way you spent more than thirty minutes of your life googling this, and if if that's the case, like why are you? Well, you got to start there, I think, because that's we all know how we started there too. So it may not be that like you're not doing it right. It's maybe like you're learning to do it right. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I on would, your like, way. Alberto, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully. Um, but also, I think it's important, and you weren't saying, and you have to be reading about thermic effect of food. You were saying just long-form content, because there, there could be... Well, or long bouts, be, like how Berto would say he'd be five hours on the internet. It might be like 20 articles, but at least he's like scanning the... Cert- like investing yeah. time, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Investing Absolutely. the time. Yeah. Yeah, you're not saying you have to read body recomposition and get all geeky on the science. I think you, you have to care and be willing to invest and think. Um, to some degree, and I think before outreach, like we, yeah, yeah, and like that. For example, our vault content is not heavy, super, super sciencey stuff. It's very practical, pragmatic, yeah. tactical thinking for for athletes. Mm-hmm. Like I think, yeah, you're right. Like, it, but like that's stuff where, like, yeah, that that's kind of like what in my mind, what you need to be a good student of the sport. Um, you know, be able to think through the issues you're going to face and the obstacles you're going to encounter as an athlete trying to become the best you can be. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think it's just an important distinction. Like you're not saying, and you have to learn about protein, you know, necessarily. Yeah. 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 But I think, I think maybe what I'm trying to say too is like, if you can't be bothered to look past social media posts Mm. or, or YouTube videos, quick ones, you know, yeah. I think that's just maybe it is like if, like we said earlier, like the, the good thing about the Dr. Joe and the Lane things back then, and the forum, because you can't just skim a forum in three minutes. Like you have to sit there at your computer. Y'all both told me this, like you would sit there for hours. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's the difference is right now, I feel like it's so easy to look at 40 infographics instead of reading like two really good, well thought out. Um, articles, you know? Oh, yeah, you had to put a lot more base level of uh, intention into it. I remember when Borders was still a thing, um, Barb and I would go spend a couple evenings a week. We would just go drive out to the Borders bookstore, and she would go look at all the stuff she liked, and I would go through and I'd grab Natural Bodybuilding and Fitness, slap it, and put it, put it underneath my arm, and I would also grab um, Muscular Development, even though there was a bunch of stuff that was kind of garbage in there, they also had this, this section about that big where it was just studies that came out and where the, how, yes. how relevant they were. Mm-hmm. Like new studies that were in the area. Um, shit, that might actually be the first true research review that came out. I don't know if that yeah. was that – might, that might have predated Alan Aragon. Um, well, that was in the beginning of the magazine, I remember. And they would yeah. always, and Eric would, and person. Berto would be like, "Nah, fuck that." <laughs> Show me the <laughs> no, chat, Berto, guys. Berto is now the research. Um, so yeah, so I would go through all the studies, and then I would read the articles and every, everything cover to cover, natural bodybuilding and fitness. 
Um, but you had to like find the magazines and go through it, drive the border, sit down. Like it wasn't just yeah, the barriers are naked. good, huh? Yeah, like I'm taking I'm taking a shit and I'm gonna go look at you know what what my my favorite abd uh, insta famous person is saying. You know, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, I feel like I'm always shitting on social media, but I just think. You're going to be the crankiest person when you're like 55. I know. But I, but I understand its importance and I, like I've always said, like I can learn a lot from it, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe I just need to turn off my DMs and I'd be happier about it. We'll see. Well, like the whole long form thing. <laughs> yeah. I think people do it, but in different ways. It's, it's just yeah. there's no specific. Like they can be on the gram for a full hour, whereas. That's true. You know, you know yep. May, okay so maybe what i'm trying to say this whole freaking time is like you need to spend time yep. you need to spend large amounts of time because like, i can say too that's how thing. i taught myself yeah. olympic lifting it was like hours and hours on hook grip and hours and hours on catalyst athletics and hours and hours uh with like mash elite and like watching videos and videos and videos and the same with brandon like we have a friend here that was like what pod? Like asked him like what podcast do you listen to? He's like I, I don't listen to podcasts that much. And he's like well what audiobooks do you? He's like I don't. But Brandon's a self taught videographer and photographer. But all of his is on YouTube because it's all visual and you have to see the equipment that they're using and you have to see how they're editing this certain thing and you have to do the online yeah. courses. You know, so I totally understand that there's different there. There's a shit ton of ways to learn, but I still like my favorite thing you said, Bert was like what is your personal research taught you so far? And if you don't have personal research hours, yes. you have no business asking people, especially publicly or busy people, like answers. Can you answer this for mm -hmm. me? Like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's such a funny question. Can you answer this for me? It's like, well, well please or my talk. favorite DM is my favorite DM is like, Hey, can I ask you some questions? I'm like, what? <laughs> well, it's like I don't even like I don't have the answer. I never know what to thing. do with that. I don't have the answer. I just don't answer those ones usually. When or I say asks like me if they can ask me a question, part of me like the pedantic part of me is like you just that did. is a question. <laughs> I know. Yes. And then another part of me is like, oh, he's being polite. I know. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I so do to those now is I'll send them to the case study Q and A question, like three D muscle dot com slash QA because I'm like if. Here, if you can, well, and that's the thing, right? This is the weird thing, and this is what just like proves that this is the problem, is they'll they're so quick to do the DM and the and the whatever, but when you say, all right, go fill out this form on the website, they can't be bothered to do it. The same person won't do it. Well, that's that's how you know like, you don't want them as a client. Shit, man. <laughs> um, well, it's not even client things, right? It's just like yeah, you wanted true. me to give you this via DM in a quick form where you wanted it spoon fed mm -hmm. to your face but if it's like like you said you can't be bothered to drive to borders and you don't care like you don't have to do yeah. your well, underwear you're still in your underwear just open the lap not even laptop. open your phone go to this form yeah. fill it out well it's sex. funny <laughs> so like as you remove barriers you could look at that as like oh it's making us soft but also it also allows for a higher elevation in the new barriers you know for so for example if the bear, if now you don't have to drive to borders, you can spend more time looking through the content mm -hmm. that's available right at your fingertips. And then a different barrier is what stops you from, from digging in. I think it's the it's the self-imposed laziness that where you're not even taking advantage of that additional time is where you're like, dude, it's all right there. And you're not even putting it in, you know, like. So like so instead that's... of the 15 minute drive, you could have Googled at least five terms. Yeah, you like argued like you just got salty with me for for five minutes on Messenger because I asked you questions when you asked me questions and you could have spent this time like oh, reading two yeah. two chapters of my book, you know. So yeah, and there's which that, you, that you probably need to pay for and you download it for free because you're lazy, but whatever, just read it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now what, Bert? What do we do? We're getting cranky. I know. I keep talking about the socials. <laughs> It's the well, recliner. I I, it's not my fault. I'm not cranky. I just, man, like at the beginning we talk about like all the shit we went through and it was really nice. And now we're like, that's because you went through that, right? And I'm like, why does yeah. anybody want to go through that? That's great. Well, I, I, I don't <laughs> think that's true though. I don't think that's true. I think it's just the, uh, it's the negativity bias and it's the availability bias that like it takes 
10 times the amount of times of hearing something positive to feel like things are going positively versus one negative, you know? That's true. One. Things are going great. I'm going to shut up. Yeah. And for, for, for two, like, last time I checked, our most consumed form of content that we put out is podcast. the long form podcast. <laughs> and, <we're, laughs> and it's been like a, an hour and 20 minutes. We're still fucking talking about yeah. nothing. People are sitting here going, why am I listening to this? these people talk about how I can't listen to them, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> No I'm one so listens sorry. to our long form content. Nobody listens to this podcast except the exact people that are listening to this. Podcast. Do it right now. Who are like, why are you talking shit? You know, no, big, big podcast love listeners. I love who, you though, who, but who I love to you. Us I no, didn't even tell you all this. Are amazing. They I are amazing. I didn't tell you yeah. all this. Uh, we got almost two hundred eighty thousand downloads last month. Whoa. Hey. So thank you, listeners, yeah. and I love you, and I owe all of y'all a very sincere apology. Yeah. Well, they know we're not talking about them. Yeah, they're, 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 they're here they're talking shit with us. You know? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, that's right. That's right. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, amens all the way to work. I know what's happening. They're probably in the car right now listening to us talk about it. And they go, they're thinking of someone who is not listening to this, who needs to be. And they're annoyed because yeah. when they go there and they, they do, like, they're, they're training the client and this person comes and nudges them in the middle of their session. They're like, hey, so what do you think about leg extensions? And they're like, God damn it, just go listen to this podcast. You know? And then they'll so. give them the podcast and be like, all right, when I see you next week, just have listened to this. And then they're going to show up and be like, oh, I didn't have time because yeah, the kid. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so now what we meant to talk about this whole fucking time, who do we listen to now and what have we learned lately and where was it from? Hey, let's talk about because I just like them. Okay. Let's talk about some of the books we've read that have impacted us. Oh, dude. All right. That's just like such a big list in so many topics for me. Let's, so I'm going to need some like more top, specifics. Top five books. About that what? That informed you at, oh, hold on. We'll get to the outcome of them. Okay. That helped you do your thing as an athlete. Whether that's mindset, because I know that's probably where most of yours are going to come from, Andrea. Or whether that's, the the approach or the uh, the way of thinking about it, which should probably be a big part for me, or uh, or whatever. Okay, my favorite is right now, or not now, but like in the last year, is Relentless by Tim S. Grover. It is because it is the angriest, and as y'all can tell, I like anger. Like that's where I come from. Not even really. It's not angry. It's just like so hardcore. Uh, hardcore. <laughs> Blunt. Yeah, there's no sugar coating. So Tim yeah. Grover was Michael Jordan's uh, trainer for like 15 years mm. or something. And he works with Kobe, Dwayne Wade, who's in Michael Jordan. He talks about them a lot. Um, and he is, it's like goes over the Relentless 13. And it's basically like, I've worked with the highest of high level athletes. There's, what did he say, cleaners, closers, and coolers. And he identifies these people, right? All athletes are either. Cleaners like Michael Jordan, like Kobe, like Dwayne, like these top level, like uh, Charles Barkley, like he mentions Tiger Woods, like all these. There's like, um, there's this person, and then like he he talks about the like the person you, you put go Barkley to up there. Yeah, oh, in his yeah. attitude well, and the way. So what's a cleaner? Okay, okay. so it's like right there, and I want to read it to y'all, but it's I'm not gonna go to, but it's like coolers. Closers, cleaners, right? And coolers, like someone you can go to when you need it. Like they, they made it to the NBA, but they're not like legends, you know? And then there's like this middle level that's like you can count on them at the end of the game. He calls them closers like that, right? Because like if you need to make the winning shot because you, you need that and you need people to congratulate you and you, you're – but when he's like a cleaner, he's like he doesn't need that recognition. He doesn't come with a closing shot. He comes with all the shots, like that kind of stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like – um Anyways, he compares these people over and over through the book, and he's basically just like laying out like these are the things that these top level athletes have of all the ones I've worked with, and it's not pretty, and it's uh, pretty fucked up depending on who's listening to it. But it's like, but you like acknowledging the dark side of these mm. people, which I think is really cool, and like it made me feel like it's okay. Like a lot of things that I do that I'm embarrassed to talk about are okay. You know? mm -hmm. So that was a really big help for me. Totally sure. recommend it. Bert, give me one. Um, this is kind of offbeat, but have you guys read Outliers? I think almost everyone yeah, has. Yeah, that's Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, when I look at the position that I'm in right now, like it fits a lot of that criteria, you know, like uh, there was this one chapter on uh, um, basically moguls uh, who, you know, they they did really well simply because they were born uh, at the right time. Right. And I kind of see myself in natural bodybuilding in our little s section of the fitness industry is, is that it's like I came around at the right time. Um, like there's all these people basically trying to get in right now, people with good intentions. Um, but when I look at back at the trail, it's like too many things just, it's like, it was just like freaking lucky. Like, and it put me in this position to do, to do a lot of good. And, um, when things get overwhelming, when things get stressing, it's one place that I go to. It's like, dude, it's like, I'm not going to say you're the chosen one, but but it kind of feels that way sometimes. And it's like, we're going to do good with this. So yeah, I go back to that and I'm like, wow, as we're here as an athlete, as a coach. Influencer. As, yeah, as, as everything basically. So I was, I was literally thinking about that not too long ago. I was like, I remember our first meetings where we were talking about, so who else is doing this? How should we set our prices? It's fucking two people, like Dr. Joe and Lane, you know? And like that, that we're actually primarily and known for online bodybuilding coaching. And we were a little younger, a little more uh, community oriented. We're the first team that did it. And like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it would have worked like two years later. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like YouTube was y'all's like, it, yeah, there's a lot of stars that align because like y'all started it. Matt found y'all. Y'all were like, oh, this YouTube thing works. And y'all were like the first coaching team to really well, invest if had, a lot like of... If, if, like if we'd started two years later, I don't think Matt would have found us. Right. Because we wouldn't have cut our chops yet. We wouldn't really know what we were doing. We wouldn't have enough profile to be found, you know? So yeah. like we had just enough... Yeah, it's funny because Matt actually just happened to be in the same city as me. And he talked to a dude Berto and I competed with at uh Berto went against him in the overall in the at the NGA show in 2008 and then he trained at my gym he was the heavyweight winner and uh he trained at my gym we talked a lot and uh and then Ogus was talking to him and he was like hey you know you should look into 3D and J they do a pretty good job coaching and then I talked to him on the phone you know and uh -huh. so that was yeah like that's the kind of thing we were had enough of a presence to to be someone worth recommending but if we had just started like Right at the start of the YouTube era, we would have just been another face in the crowd, I think. So that's motivating to, to you, Bert, because you're like, I was given this opportunity, so I better take advantage of it kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I don't want to go back and think like, dude, this could have been done a little bit better. Um, and yeah, this, this goes as an athlete, as a coach. There's just too many things that worked out. Like even the collection of us as as coaches, uh, it was the right combination of many things, you know. Um, and yeah, like to to every year, every two years, like I guess surprise. I'm surprised with where we're at, but I think it's the fact that we think this way um, that keeps us going. And in our own way, it's funny. Like we don't have. Um, we're not the most popular team on, on the internet. We're, we're as, as individuals, we're not as popular as some other big names, but, um, it's almost like we've intentionally made it that way. Whereas like when you get to us, it's when you're really like ready. It's like, there's some prerequisites, this, this jungle that you go through to get through us. And, and like, yeah, we do try to put things out there that, you know, can help someone who is newer. But uh, at the same time, I feel like it's kind of designed that way. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot, of, a lot of the people who do have these huge platforms who are huge influencers in the industry, it's like they, they know about us. And, they res and almost everyone, I could say, like respects what we do as a team. Like we are standouts within like the people who, who are like, you know, top of the game influencers and – yeah, that, that means that we're doing a fantastic job, I feel, because a lot of these people are sometimes very, very different. Um, 
And again, like I, I know what, what drives me is just the fact that like this is your chance. Like you guys can do something unique, something special. You can leave this better than how you found it. Um, like do something with it. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's the little voice when it comes to this that's always playing in the back of my mind. So I, it sounds that what I'm hearing is like uh, kind of reading that book made you realize how lucky we were in terms of yeah. when we decided to try to do this and that we need to. It keeps you grounded and grateful and yeah. probably humble to a degree. Like I'm not anything crazy special, but I came at the right time and I have the right intentions and I need to keep those those good intentions kind of at the core of it. Cause that's how I feel a lot of the times. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Word, word, word. Books as an athlete, Eric. Yeah. So I've got, um, I got two that pop in my head. Okay. One super recent and then one that was just the, the one that opened my eyes as far as like writing training programs. So one will be easy to talk about, but practical programming by Ripto and Lon Kilgore, Lon Kilgore was, they just threaded the needle between so many concepts that I think that's when I first started to figure out how to write programs Build and things not just for like, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. um, start it, like don't get me wrong. It's not like all of a sudden, boom. And then another one that was really, really, I think important to me was um, Perennial Seller, which which you turned me on to. Yeah, as an Holiday. athlete? See, y'all asked about athlete books and y'all both didn't talk about, y'all talked about like coaching and business. Well, practical programming, I originally, originally okay. read to like make myself uh, a better athlete and okay. then it just trickled down. I read that in like 09, so I was okay. barely coaching, you know. Um, but yeah, I think Perennial Seller was just really important because it made me realize just how important um, quality is in mm -hmm. the hustle and bustle of the current like like speed of, of how things get done and the pressure just to put out content. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was starting to go against my own grain of like, Hey, don't write something unless, or create a YouTube video. Don't do something unless it's going to be like, you want, want to, you're passionate and it's going to be awesome. Like, all right, I got to put out content. And then I would, I went away from that idea of just got to put out, just got to get something out there mm -hmm. because I'm like, nah, this is bullshit. I want, I want my stuff to be like there and matter, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, no, I think those are all pretty important to me. Okay. I have like yeah. 40 books. I know. I shouldn't, though. Why? I don't know. Well, because, I won't, okay, like as an athlete or as a coach? Or as a, like, I need more specifics again. Y Whatever give me just speaks books. to you. Yeah. Dude, speaks to okay. You. So, um, Grit by Angela Duckworth is a great book. It's really long. I recommend the audio. Uh, but it's like the, how, I think the subtitles on there, like how passion and perseverance unite or whatever, but it's basically, um, all your books are about the three D's. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. No, are yeah. they? No, they're not. All the ones I talk about oh, on here are. The book's named Grit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, what makes me happy about that one or like what, what it really goes over is like playing down talent, I guess. Mm. Like, um. When people say, oh, well, I, you know, so-and-so is so talented or so-and-so is a natural, um, that's basically like an internal cop-out. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's yeah. Most of the time. So if they're yeah. – like I don't have that because I wasn't born with what they have rather than like, oh, they really worked hard and made their situation and da da da, da. Yeah. So that's a good one. Um, Even if it's true too, like – if someone is just relying on their genetics or whatever, like you don't actually know that from some silly post that you watched or some yeah. dumbass game commentary. But the fact, just be aware, like the fact when you go there and the first thing you think is, oh, BBC genetics or he's on gear, like even if it's true, the fact that your brain goes there should be an alarm bell for you. Mm -hmm. That as soon as you see something that is better than you, you close the door to potentially learning or changing yourself to going, no, I'm good. That's that's something I can't attain. Yeah. No, I have a lot of other books. There's like about like not anything that I think our listeners. Mm. <laughs> like I've been reading a lot of books on writing. Um, I'm reading a book on comedy right now. Uh, nice. Like that's what I'm saying. Like so, it might seem like I mean, but those are the ones that I give here because it's for our peeps, no. For. Um, yeah. 
The best book I've read in a long time is Creativity by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, but that has nothing to do with 3D anything. So, that, that's, again, why I'm not. <laughs> uh, but his other book, maybe, uh, Flow, might be a good book. Mm -hmm. I've heard good things about that. Yeah, like how you get into the state, which Close another to. one that's similar for work is Deep Work by Cal Newport, which is like mm -hmm. less about like, athletes and getting in the zone and more about like how to structure your work day for um, but I think a good place to start would be like the champion's mind by Jim Ephemero I think is how you say it the champion's mind does a good layout of like like a real I think a, a basic thing of like these are how top performing top performing athletes do shit so again it's called the champion's mm -hmm. mind there's another one by another sports psychologist that um, he works with a lot of golfers. Give me a second, I'll find it, but y'all can keep talking. <laughs> Bert, any of the books that you big time for you? Um, oh, sorry, I found it. I thought I found it. Oh, uh, yeah, How Champions Think. So it's a similar title, but that's by I Rob Rotella. You need to have a Spotify list for books. I do, Andrea. I think for like people out there, because I, like... I think there's going to be people that when you're talking about these things, they're like, I well, really. Well, Steve's going to link them. That. Steve's oh, so gangster. He's going to make it all deal. That's why I no, should have said gangster. the title. Oh, gangster. Coaching wise, I didn't talk about coaching ones like how to deal with people, but I'll do that in a second. You go ahead, Bert. Um, no, I was going to say um, <laughs> two different ends, but um, I remember trying to read Mel Siff's Super Training the first time and just being pissed off because it was not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and eventually yeah, this book is so not like, readable. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm finally going to read it, and I'm going to take it for what it is. Um, and it was definitely worth it. But then reading practical programming and like having both those things, and it's like this is kind of what I was looking for. So the way the message was put out there in practical programming, I'm like, hey, you know, th this other book is great. It's fantastic. Like if you're a nerd when it comes to this, it's like, it's like bragging rights to have your copy, but um, but like the practical programming is like that's kind of what I want to be for people. Like I want mm -hmm. to, um, not because I could have very well have never came back to that and been like you know what fuck this I'm just gonna go see with Johnny Jackson and Branch Warner. <laughs> but, um, um, so yeah, that book for the same reasons I was like I was like wow this all makes sense this really uh, connects to what I have experienced uh, and the little gaps in, in my knowledge that, um, that that I had at the time. So, yeah, that's 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 a goodie. Not enough people have read that one because I think mostly people just don't read <laughs> books when it comes to fitness, especially when yeah. it comes to fitness. Yeah, super training. Everyone wants to have said they've read it, but most people have read a couple chapters and then dug around a little bit and then stopped. But super training is – man, it's – you got to talk about barriers. Like you have to be willing to work to understand things in that book. Cause it's not written. There was no editor, you know, <laughs> like it, it was like two scientists got together. They put it in there. The editor said, Hey, I think we should change this. And they said, shut up. And they just published it, you know? So yeah, but yeah, practical programming. That's, that's the one, like everyone reads Stardic strength, but man, I wish they would read uh, practical programming. Yeah. Cause it's really good. Uh, I have people dealing books. That was what I was looking up while I was talking. Five dysfunctions of a team. Oh yeah, you like that one. Because That's we're a, a team. Line. It still blows my mind. I don't know who I was telling about. I think it was just Brandon. That there's, I know I'm the fifth, but like that four grown ass men have stayed together for almost 10 years. That's going to be 10 years next year. That's such a hard thing to do. Business partners, I've, even two people, but four of y'all. Mm -hmm. It's so I cool. made everyone read Five Dysfunctions of a Team way early. And I was like, yeah. we have to argue. We have to fight. We have to be willing to disagree passionately. And I see where we're at now, and I'm like, we're more likely to be together now the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's getting more co cohesed versus Cohes. more fractured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. What you got, Andrea? All right. Along with grit, just so y'all know, there's a couple – that I think go with that if we were going to grit Angela Duckworth, Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg, and then the other one's The Talent Code. 
by I can't remember who Daniel Coyle. Those are all like kind of the same in like the whole where does talent come from, um, and like dissecting it. Like it's not just like you were blessed with this and you were born and the unicorn touched you and you have this shit. It's like how you actually develop those things. So that was or build off of the last thing, but. Um, the things that I think has helped me a lot as a one-on-one -on -one coach, like not dealing with teams like we just talked about, but like me and, and people, is this book called Mindwise by Nicholas Epley. How, let's see, what's the, ah, how we understand what others think, believe, feel, and want. That's a really good one. Um, and dealing with other people. Also, Quiet, which is like, uh, The Power of Introverts by Susan Cain, is one that... It helped me realize, like, you guys all know this too. Like, I talk about behaviors a lot, right? And I, and I, I really get interested in, in f getting feedback from my athletes via video and like how what they're doing and and the. I've talked about in, in our in a couple of seminar things, like what you're telling me is not what you're showing me, mm. and and that whole thing. But quiet, which again is about um, dealing with introverts, being an introvert, how. It, it just kind of made me realize that there's displayed behaviors, which is what I always looked for and pride myself on, but there's also, um, like, there's shit beyond that. Like, displayed behaviors only work if someone actually tells you or shows you. And so it was, like, this whole new level of opening up, and it's, like, I've always looked at spreadsheets, looked at videos, read emails, but what are the things that they're not telling me? You know, so just like the, it was like this whole new level of like, shit. Okay, well, if someone's not comfortable on video, even though I say I can tell so much from video, what if they do need to write because that's the only way that they can express or whatever? Or even then, what if the blank slate is overwhelming, so maybe I need to give them a questionnaire? You know? So it was just like a whole nother level of like, um, it was just like blew my mind open of like, there's coaching based on a spreadsheet and there's coaching based on a video and feedback in their data. And then there's this whole other thing that I never even thought about, which is like, some people can't deliver shit that way. So now what do you do? You know? Um, so that was like a big light bulb for me. Um... And then I love the shit out of uh, all the other coach books. Like, um, what was it Pete Carroll's Win Forever? Uh, the Bill Walsh, uh, was it The Score Takes Care of Itself? Phil Jackson's 11 Rings. So, like, just other successful coaches in, uh, like, especially team coaches. I feel like there's a lot of books out there for that. I know there's individual coaches too, but, like, the... The great, like, dynasty coaches, I think, is, like, so cool to read about and how they've all evolved in their careers and shit. I love that Phil Jackson titled his book 11 Rings. <laughs> That'd be like Ronnie Coleman writing a book saying, like, I'm fucking Jack. But he goes <laughs> through them all. <laughs> it, no, it's, I, it's real cool. I like that book actually, a lot. It would be more like Ronnie saying eight Olympias or something like that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're really good books. Um, anyways, there's a lot of other shit, but those ones come to mind. I say come awesome. to mind as I'm like scrolling through my fucking Kindle. Um, I think that's probably plenty of reading for us to yeah, leave. Yeah, I'm going to stop yeah. now. See, that's why yeah. I'll yeah. let me go. I need a specific question. All right, I'm done. Um, I'm done. That's good. Though. I'll, I'll say this. Like when it comes to like my learning, I think the biggest difference between when I started and now, especially now that this is what I do, it's kind of like the way a musician like just listens to the world. There's like cars, like flying by the freeway it's like a tune you know mm -hmm. um and to me when it comes to when it comes to like the things i do like whether it be bodybuilding or powerlifting or just hey i just want to be a little bit of both um like i'm always like there's data everywhere for me you now mm -hmm. and things yeah. that i would miss out on before but everything 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 is is data and it's very hard to like shut it off yeah it's the worst like I can't sleep at night. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for non-readers and like other things, like I can we maybe go more tactical 
online resources for people like specifically bodybuilding, powerlifting, strength athlete type shit? Yeah. So good podcast to listen to. You can start there besides ours. Okay. Yeah. Like I think um, some stuff I've been listening to I really like. Uh, the Strength Athlete podcast and the RTS podcast and the SSPT podcast. Those are three really good uh, powerlifting focused podcasts to listen to. If you want to learn more like general, like sciencey stuff, I think Sigma Nutrition is really, really good. So is the Iraqi Nutrition podcast by Juma. Does a really good job with that. Um, getting in the way athletes' brains work. The um, the Resurrection of the Novo podcast, I think, is really, really good. They've had some awesome people on there just in, like just really recently starting that. So that's been that's been really cool. I like listening to that one. Um, and then um, just to kind of engender the whole qualities of thinking, Andy Galpin's podcast. Um, mm-hmm. What is that called? Body of Work. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? That, that, that's, that's a pretty damn good one that I've been listening to lately. So I'll, I'll leave it there, and then you guys can get some other resources. Um, I think from here on out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disclaimer up front, or I don't know what the word is, up Sorry, front. Body of knowledge. Oh, I messed that up. Not body of knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Andy. This is um, that I, and I don't know if this is right or not, but I sort of feel like it fits with my interest and my job description as the resident, like, n- spends my time outside of bodybuilding mostly. And I think it's a function of my recent few years trying to, again, learn Olympic lifting, which puts me into a lot of functional fitness circles, which puts me into um, a lot of strength and conditioning, and then I've had injuries. So, like, most of the shit I absorb, listen to, read is not as directly tied to bodybuilding and powerlifting um, as far as what's on the internet now. And, again, people will be like, that's not your job or whatever. I get that. But, like, again... Through this podcast and through our meetings and through the happenstance of like social media and things that just pop into me, I feel like my bodybuilding education is set enough for me to do my job. And then what I, and then because of the things I have learned, how to learn, if I need to look things up, I, I trust that I will. So therefore, from here on out, a lot of my stuff will be coming from a, a different place. So when I, Think about podcasts that would help an athlete in general. I think the Brute Strength podcast is phenomenal. Um, It's a guy named Michael Cashew who's been to the CrossFit Games. His wife, Adi Cashew, who was Adi, I forget her maiden name because they married recently, but she runs a company called Working Against Gravity, which is like probably the biggest and and one of the most forefront. people to use macronutrients for functional fitness athletes and weightlifters. Um, And so it's just a a really, he's very open-minded for what people would think is a CrossFit, whatever. Um, But yeah, the Brute Strength podcast is a really good one. And depending on the guest, Barbell Shrugged podcast is really good because you get to hear people from, they have a pretty good variety of um, strength and strength athletes in general. Um, I'll leave that there. Those are a couple good ones that aren't so, they're not like sports specific, but they're pretty good. Cool. Love, like, love it. And then, uh, Berto, why don't you leave us with, with a few recommended sources um, that we haven't already talked um, about? I think, uh, the research reviews are, it's, it's nice that we have choices now and that they exist. So Alan's for sure. Mass uh, James James Krieger's research review highly highly underrated super user user friendly too, um, and I'd say that like outside of that just again kind of going back to what I was saying like my 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 most recent flavor has been like not being able to leave work at work like I will on purpose start conversations with people at my gym just to kind of see how they tick and <laughs> learn a little bit more like if you're having a conversation with me. And we are, it's, it's a DM or something like I am analyzing and I'm going to extract from that. Yeah. So that's. Client that's reports are good education. Yeah. It's exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say that early on I did a whole lot of, of uh, pro bono work when it mm-hmm. came to, to helping and coaching others. Um, 
And that's something that I learned so much from. And then our first few years when uh, I had a shit ton of clients, like I had 70 something clients, but it's not like those coaches that have 70 something clients. Like I got to fucking work on those 70 something clients. Um, So now that I'm not taking on as many people, like I'm still very interested in that was just such a huge part of my upbringing as a coach and like helping myself as an athlete too. Cause often I could see little gaps in like that person. I'm like, shoot, that's me. And I do that to myself all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, I, I guess like there's, there's like, there's information everywhere. And just like you, like you, you, uh, you're, you're, you're warning ahead of time, Andrea, is that a lot of what you're learning is coming from other places. Mm-hmm. I, I'd say that, yeah, you know, be, be open to learning from a variety of different sources. Like I, whenever like the guys, it, my, one of my gyms that are clearly abusing anabolics, like they're talking to me, like I'm going to listen cause I'm going to get something from that. Maybe mm-hmm. not necessarily how to set up the monthly training, <laughs> but there's something that I can get from that. That's going to help me help other people in, in the long term. So, yeah. So yeah, just be, be open to learning and it's 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 everywhere it's everywhere 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 and if you're really passionate about this just how i couldn't get off the computer you know when i was scouring (laughs) to the ends of the internet looking for the latest and greatest the same thing can be said now it's just like it's applicable to like everything so this conversation when i get out there and i talk to my mom about whether or not she's eating her protein for the day because she's on a mini diet like i'll pick up things from that that will be useful to me Yeah. So yeah. Info's everywhere. Never stop learning. Well done. I dig it. So uh, just in accordance to what I get asked a lot, because I, I, you know, people, I guess, see my training or whatever, um, is how to learn Olympic lifting and how to incorporate hit into their cardio. And I think, and I know functional fitness is like a hot thing, right? It used to be everyone who finished bodybuilders, or we finish the bodybuilding season, we go to powerlifting, and there's other people on our rosters, like 3D athletes that I see doing like a snatch here and there, or a muscle up, or a, you know, whatever. It's a thing. It's a thing now. And I, um, I did snatches yesterday. See, there you go. So and I think creators. some, if you wanted to do something different, I think some good, we should maybe. Because I'd be smart enough to also say, like, I'm not going to coach anyone's Olympic lifting, but I do know how I learned and I know where I learned. Um, so if you're going that route, and we've talked about how we don't recommend a lot of people go that route, but if you are, I think Catalyst Athletics is my favorite uh, resource for information. That whole website is fucking incredible. Um, they also have a podcast. It's not called the Catalyst Pocket. It's like the Weightlifting Life Podcast, I think is what it's called. Um mm. Mash Elite Performance. Eric, feel free to throw anything on if you want. And like I said, Hook Grip, any, they have like 15 Instagram accounts. Watching heavy ass lifts in slow motion is one of the best things I think you can do for yourself over and over. I, like that thing. I yeah. would agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that. And then uh, as far as functional fitness, I feel like that's a whole new thing that most people would probably need a coach for in which you should go somewhere. But there are online programs i don't think people know this that when when they're like what do i what do i do for cardio or whatever if i if i want to do a circuit or whatever there's lots of free crossfit daily programming all over the internet um if you just go to crossfit.com like the crossfit main site has shit every day that's like more class specific um another really good one is invictus crossfit invictus it's in california it's like one of the crossfit dynasties or whatever but they have daily online programming um, I think you go to like, I shouldn't say the website because I'll mess it up, but CrossFit Invictus is what it's called, and they have fitness, performance, and competition programming every day for free. Um, cool. If you wanted to check that out. And then Comp Train, which um, this guy named Ben Bergeron, he coaches uh, Katrin David Stutter and Matt Frazier and a couple others that are like the top of the top elite CrossFit game winners. And at that, um, he has a thing called comptrain.co, I think. And there's individual competitor programming every single day. So if you don't want to go to a CrossFit place and you want to try these, like, higher intensity thingies, there's stuff there. Just understand there's, like, a learning curve. You're going to look at this programming if you're a bodybuilder and be like, what are they even talking about? So you might have to do some research to figure out what they're asking you to do. But 
that's my favorite way to lift. And I told Berto this too, like even though I'm not competing in anything, I personally find a lot of joy in like timed percentage based instructional, like, like lifting like a CrossFitter is like one of my favorite, like my barbell lifts is super fun to me. I'm not saying I want you to do that, but if you wanted to do those things, because I, I personally get a lot of DMs about that, those would be some good places to check out. I'm going to break for a minute. <laughs> that was it. I think it's bad that I said that on this podcast. No. Okay. No. No. Like, I think I get the DMs because no one wants to publicly say, like, I'm interested in CrossFit. I know I'm a 3D athlete. Or, like, I've been following off for a long time, but I want to do something different. And so I get the private Please, messages. Our people need to hear this. For the record, there's nothing wrong with CrossFit. Thank you. All right. There are some dumb CrossFitters, but there are some dumbass bodybuilders too. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But I get the Nothing private messages. It's weird to me. I feel like it's everyone's like secret. Wrecked, everyone's yeah. wrecked strength training at some point, and bodybuilders are just as guilty as CrossFitters when you look at yeah. how this came, came around. Powerlifters and Olympic lifters break themselves all the time. So do CrossFitters. And look, it's, it's, an, it's, it's, it's all competing in fitness. We're all competitive exercisers. Don't get on a high horse. Yeah. And... Also, if you look at the history of things, like you want to go way back, way back, like the first like old school physique competitions, you had to do athletic stuff to get points. And it wasn't just lifting necessarily. They had like hand balancing, gymnastics, all kinds of shit. So um, now personally, I just don't like cardio of any type. <laughs> I like lifting. So like. Like there's a, uh, there, there's, it's not very popular at all, but there's a, it started in the, I think the eighties, it was like a throwback to, to respect to the original weightlifters back in the day, because it wasn't until I want to say 1928 that there was a, they, they firmed up what was actually an Olympic weightlifting with the two hand barbell only clean and jerk, uh, clean and strict press and snatch. And that press came away in the seventies. But before that, um, like the three or four or five Olympics before that, uh, you, you might go to the Olympics and be like, oh, this year we're going to do the one-arm dumbbell snatch. This year we're going to do the one-arm dumbbell clean and press. Um, so anyway, this federation started in like the 80s, and it's only big in a few countries. It's not, not that big at all. It's all around lifting. And there's like a, a book of like 200 different lifts you can do with a barbell or a dumbbell, and I'll choose a handful of them, and, and then you'll compete in that in competition. So that's, that's like cool. more close to like – to like original lifting was like anyway. And that's not that different from CrossFit. And let's be honest, like strongman is basically CrossFit minus the cardio stuff with a lot heavier weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. So like it, it ain't that different. And I, yeah. I, I consider CrossFitters um, part of the, 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 the iron Individual community. strength sport, I think is the way I think of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another thing that I, I kind of want to talk about too are like treasure troves that we don't often talk about in strength conditioning is dudes like Eric Cressy, Tony Gentlecore, mm. um, like true strength mm. and conditioning yeah. coaches. Yeah, yeah. Like S, S and C. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that we can learn a lot from. And so much. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Joe DeFranco. Uh, Dean Somerset. Dean Somerset, yeah. But yeah. There, there's just a lot of – we. I was talking Press to Berto about this. Gold. We just get so stuck yeah. in our ways. Um. And, and you know, kind of going on the on the on the CrossFit thing, like the, you know, the hybrid athlete thing isn't that new. But there's a section of powerlifters and a section of bodybuilders that they don't want to see what the other person's doing. Yeah. Because um, it doesn't apply to them, and it I, I, it makes me cringe when I see a bodybuilder. Who, with their Valero belt, who, like, I, you, you couldn't trust them to like halfway run a high school weightlifting program. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you should know a little. I feel a little bit of something when it comes to like the uh, of everything in the iron game. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. um, it's like it's like that should be your base knowledge. Like learn, like man, they'll, they'll use the big movements, the bench press, the squat, and the deadlift. They look horrendous. They're like not neurologically like. <laughs> all well, the like, way adapted can't do a push-up uh -huh. correctly like that shit blows just, my mind uh, just yeah, <laughs> just like knowing how to yeah. move yeah is, is that's one of the wonderful things about strength training and i, I think yeah. especially this is more so towards the bodybuilders it's like 
it's like you need to have that stuff down. It's going to help you when it comes to your bodybuilding. And it's awesome. Like it's I so guarantee awesome. you there's going to be a point in my career where I do a super total on some Friday and then compete in, in, in a bodybuilding show the next day just, just so I could feel like I'm – it's like 19 – well, <laughs> well, there's just a, I don't know. I feel like I think I think we should host when we finally have our like 3D MJ show. It's a bodybuilding only, male and female. We should have an optional uh, classic division, and it's not like you wear bigger trunks. I'm talking like classic, classic, like that you come in the day prior and you have to do an Olympic lifting meet and, and a powerlifting meet, and then the next day you you get on stage. Okay, so in a track meet and, you, and a tennis no, match. No, 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 <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I see what you're saying. Um, I think, too, maybe I'd like to just throw out some body care sites, programs. Body care? Body? You're oh, so gross. Oh, I just gross. Said body care. God. Uh, yeah, some of those are, man, they're so hit and miss with whether they're, they're based on well, bullshit gonna, or not, though. Well, Here's the deal. If you're going to either walk into the gym and go straight to a never stretch, get under a bar, leave, and complain that everything hurts, maybe you could try things like, like Rom Wad's an easy one. It's like a little subscription. You get to stretch every day the way Olympic lifters do. If you can move, cool. I'm just There's one. Um, but joint care would be Active Life RX. Which has like you it's know, not I, like I I'm stretch gonna, every day for the record. Just yeah, right I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I just well, I didn't want to make it sound like I was anti-stretching. Right, right, right. right. But like, uh, if you can't get to the bottom of a squat because you're limited, like maybe you should, and maybe you don't do it unless someone tells you what to do. Like these are just some mm. some things. Some useful tools. Um, yeah. Not make your own thing, but I think it's useful. These all there's like so many things online that l- literally give you programs. Like they'll tell you, you know, and like one I've used is Power Monkey Fitness for um i used when my shoulder was bad and i go to it sometimes too and it's just like i need to strengthen my gymnastics positions and by that i mean like my overhead position i don't mean like a a bridge and something that's crazy it's like overhead carries um active hangs like it'd probably be great for you eric for because you do snatch sometimes like shit like that they're just like caring for yourself um and, and the active life rx is like bulletproof shoulder program it's like 15 minutes three times a week before you train do these do this And it's like this little program of like just joint care. And I think that a lot of people could benefit from that instead of being like, this hurts, so I'm not training, or it feels good and I'm training 100%. Like there's a medium ground that I think we miss a lot, and I've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I give them two? Please do. Two that I think are. Go for it. um, So this is an old article, Cressy, uh, Caveman No More. It's a Mm -hmm. three-part. It's a a classic, and up until like the last like five years, it hasn't been a classic, but for a minute there, um, yeah, it was just the kind of the right dosage of like assessing, but not making you like a hypochondriac when it comes to Yeah, and just like for the listeners, Cressy, like he's strength and conditioning, but he's known like he's the baseball guy for the pitchers, for the shoulders and elbows, but it's like we both knew, like we all three have known about him and read, he has a great site, like a really great site and some good uh, products too. That he's done with like and, Dean uh, Somerset. What, what was the other one, Bruno? Stu Phillips. Um, oh. And uh, he's got the big three, which it's like, it's so, I love it because it's like the right amount of, uh, of a little something you can do when it comes to spinal um, care. And, and um, one thing, I, I started incorporating those basically daily for the last three months. And it's made me so much more aware in regards to like what my spine does. And now I know when shoot when my deadlift was flying is because I was really in tune with that. I was healthy, um, and I knew how to position myself to be strong and be safe. Um, it's again like he dosed those perfectly. It's like the right amount of work, something that almost everyone everyone should be able to do every day if you care about it. So those two things are, are I think, oh. two two great sources in in that category. Coaching resources, SBS. You're wearing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh look at that. Look what at is, look at that. Heck. Yeah, Those absolutely boobies. not. Actually, the SBS. Thank you. The SBS Academy <laughs> um, has a really good podcast, and I'm I'm not even on there very often at all. But they do a, a fantastic job thinking about all the different ways that you need to think about your clients if you're mm-hmm. a personal trainer. Like they've had everything from eating disorders to 
uh, social media to like clinical cancer populations if you're working with them uh, to group group fitness classes like they've had a ton of really high quality stuff thought at at a deep level yeah and kind of giving Shout a lot out. of respect to the fact that um, you have a large impact on your clients' lives and, and they yeah. are looking for a mentor, not just someone to count reps. So I think, yeah, absolutely. We need to shout out to Lawrence. He thinks, like, that. that's going to sound weird, but one of my favorite things about Lawrence is that he's not trying to be an athlete. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he'll say it to you know, he, that, that he just he's respects. He's very comfortable being an exerciser. Yes, he mm-hmm. is. And there's but value in that, yeah. He loves, but he also is like a studier of the human condition on his own, which is... I found something. Um, and that's Siri, Siri. Siri thought I was talking to her. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. But you know what I mean? Like, so shout out to, uh, I, th- I just think that's something valuable, right? And you wouldn't think like we, t- I don't know. He's, he's a really cool person and it's for a lot mm-hmm. of the different, for a lot of different reasons that someone who's in fitness would think. Um, yep. uh, what's it called? I haven't read it yet, but I hear a lot about this, uh, conscious coaching by Brett Bartholomew. Is that what it is? Have you guys read this? Mm-hmm. I heard Brett Bartholomew on uh, Andy Galpin's podcast, you think? Body of Knowledge. Mm-hmm. He's, I like his style. Yeah, like he's, it, it's Conscious uh, like Coaching that. is his it's book. I haven't one read interview it. I've heard, but I, like, I really like the way he, um, he presents things and thinks and, yeah. and talks about human interaction. Um, another couple, like there's a guy named Justin Sua who I follow on Twitter, Instagram, and he, uh, I think he's a sports psychologist, a performance psychologist, something like that. But everything he puts out, and he has like a daily podcast. Like it's a real short few minute thing that's like if you need a little kick in the pants, I think a lot of people really like that. Um, and Andy, no, not Andy, Michael Gervai. Gervai, he was, I, uh, some baseball team, he's their sports psychologist. But he was on the Brute Strength podcast, and that was like an awesome interview too. Um can't remember the name of his book. I feel like shit. But yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll Google him. Huh? They'll Google, they can Google him. Yes, they can Google him. You said his name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. We've done a lot. I think that's good. I don't want to overload him. Like, we've given him a It's a, a long-ass podcast. Stuff. This is our first over so, yeah. two hours in a while. Yeah. So, I think we've given you all the resources you need to possibly <laughs> satisfy yourself for the next four years. <laughs> And uh, but at the, by the time we get to there, we'll give you even more on some other update yeah. to this one. So yeah, I think we're good to call it there. And go through them before you DM us. And... Absolutely, never ask us another question. Just use these oh. resources. I'm kidding. And I'm, I'm sorry kidding. that yeah. you listen to my podcast. And I'm talking about people not listening to my podcast. That's not nice. No, you're all good. Okay. All right. Thanks for chatting, guys. Thanks so much for listening, guys. 3DMJ prides itself on keeping this show, our blog, and our YouTube channel as free and relevant sources of information for our community week after week. We also release additional free video courses as often as possible at 3DMJVault.com. If you'd like to help support our mission and our work, please consider becoming a monthly patron of our endeavors. Go to patreon.com slash team 3DMJ and donate as little as $1 per month to our cause of helping educate and grow the drug-free bodybuilding and powerlifting communities worldwide. You can definitely choose to donate more, and if you do so, we'll send you discount codes for future use on any of our paid products. But any little bit helps, and we appreciate your monthly support in any amount that you see fit. So again, you can start assisting the team at patreon.com slash team 3dmj that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash team 3dmj thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in the next show